Mark, good morning to you. We know that uh, you're warning about this big meltdown. How much of that is because of the fiscal cliff? How much is because of the election? We haven't had a chance to talk to you since the election. What do you think? <laughs> Actually, I'm so happy to be on your show because whenever I feel depressed and I see you, you group of people that are so optimistic, I feel enlightened and again full of life. So I think actually you should open a psychiatric clinic for depressed people and uh, you would do very well because everybody would feel good <laughs> after talking to you. But would we be but, uh, fooling uh, the them into feeling this. good? Is there I a... think... You... <laughs> Max, is that a realistic idea here that, that, uh, that, that now uh, President Obama is going to pull back the country from the so-called fiscal cliff? Are you buying it? <laughs> the fiscal cliff is just more theater from bankers and politicians trying to distract people from the underlying root catastrophe that is a bunch of wankers and bankers who are manipulating the system day in and day out, destroying the economy. This fiscal cliff is just more drama, more theater. It, it doesn't really focus on the true underlying problems and we're going to see more of this going forward in 2013. Anything to deflect attention from the mobs with their pitchforks and, and their torches who are coming after these people, they want to just delay that day of reckoning for as many months as they can. Max. That day's reckoning in 2013 Max. is coming! Uh, Jim, can I start off by asking you why you think the equity markets are not responding to the stabilization plans that are being introduced around the world at the moment? Because they're absurd. Jeff, we have people if I, if I had come on your show every week for a hundred weeks in a row and everything I said to you was wrong, would you keep me on your show? Would you have any confidence in me? Would you listen to me? Mr. Paulson, Mr. Bernanke and the guy at the New York Fed, Tim somebody, every week they have been dead wrong. Why would you listen to them? I wouldn't listen to them. In the Western world, including Japan, the problem is we have too much debt and that debt now will have to be somewhere, somehow repaid or it will slow down uh, economic growth. And so I think that we lived beyond our means 1980 to 2007 and now it's payback period. But it, it's payback period, but if you have a situation that you expect where the fiscal cliff is one that we never address, we just kick the can down the road and deal with it another day, when does it actually start to catch up with us? I can't tell you precisely the day, but I think the whole global financial system will have to be reset at some problem. And it won't be reset by central bankers, but by imploding markets, either the currencies or the debt markets or the stock markets. But it will happen. It will happen one day, big time. And then you, we will all be lucky if we still have 50% of the asset values that we have today. So if we were to handle the fiscal It's a very optimistic scenario. No, I, I, there, are, there are a lot of people who have, have talked about this scenario. It's something that definitely worries me too. But do you think it would be a situation that could be avoided if we tackled the fiscal cliff and actually made some tough decisions right now? If we grasped at austerity the way some of the Europeans have done it, there are people who say we don't want to do it that way because look at what's happened in Europe. They've gone back into a recession. But is it your thought that we need to deal with this medicine and, and, and suffer the pain at some point for sure there will be pain and there will be very substantial pain the question is do we take less pain now through austerity or risk a complete collapse of society in five to ten years time and in a democracy they're not going to take the pain now they're going to kick down the problems and uh, they'll become bigger and bigger I happen to agree with you. I find it outrageous that anybody has to step in and bail out a bunch of 29-year-olds driving Maseratis. What about all the people in countries that minded their manners, saved their money, didn't get overextended, and now all of a sudden they're being asked to bail out a bunch of guys on Wall Street who were incompetent at best and some of them crooks? I find it outrageous. But by the way, even if it's not outrageous, the way to solve this problem is to let people go bankrupt. 
All of this pumping money into the system is not going to save it. You see what the market is saying. The market says, we don't buy that. Let people go bankrupt, then you will hit bottom, and then you will start over. The people who are sound will take over the assets from the people who are unsound, and we will start over. This is the way the world has worked for a few thousand years. Well, Max, okay, you talk about putting people in jail, but has anyone actually paid for their actions? I mean, we've, we've seen the riots in Greece and Italy and Spain, and we, you know, the, the Eurozone that many people have been saying for ages now has just been going down the drain. Has anyone been held to account yet? The only people paying for this are savers and pension holders who are being forced to get only 1% or less on their savings. They're the ones who are subsidizing all these bailouts. They're the ones who are paying for all these bailouts. And those people are getting angrier by the day as we see more quantitative easing and more bailouts are forcing money from savers, hardworking savers, into the pockets of the speculators and the banksters. That's, the, that's where we're seeing this money, and those people are getting angrier by the day. Yeah, but Jim, we, we, um, we do want an orderly restructuring of the financial economy. We don't actually want to throw lots of people out of jobs because we have a liquidity problem in the global economy at this stage and that's the issue here isn't it we don't want to go back to depression era economics just because we cannot manage an orderly deleveraging of the financial economy Jeff, we had the worst excesses we've had in the mar credit markets in world history you think we just wake up one morning and say oh well we had a horrible horrible period of excess and now everything's okay we're just going to ignore that we're going to have to take some pain Jeff Never before in world history were people able to buy houses with no money down. Many people bought four or five houses with no money down and no job. And then they did it with cars and student loans and credit card loans. You think we just say, well, that's too bad, we're going to start over, nobody loses his job? Jeff, be realistic. Um, is there anyone at this point you're already eyeing up for 2013? Any victims in the future? Oh, absolutely. Uh, absolutely. We're going after Jamie Dimon. We got the cuffs ready for him. We're gonna find him. We're gonna jail him along with his bankster compadres. This is the year we see banksters in jail. Iceland is already putting banksters in jail. Now the rest of the world's gonna start putting banksters in jail. Uh, Jim, what do we um, what do we need from our G7 leaders this weekend? Well, what they need to do is, you know, go down to the bar and have a beer and leave the rest of us alone. Let everybody, let the people who are sound succeed and let the other people fail. And you know, Jeff, what I'm afraid of is they're going to keep doing what they've been doing, which the market hates. You can see the market hates it because this is going to unleash rampant inflation around the world, rampant confusion in the currency markets, and you're going you're gonna to have people, currencies gyrating all over the world, bond markets are going to start to collapse, and then we're going to have a real problem, and that's why the stock market, the stock market understands this. They're unleashing a inflationary holocaust and, because they don't know what else to do, and they're making mistakes. Yeah, 28 weeks to go uh, during that 20, next 28-week period, looking for a total collapse. I put my, my flag, I planted my flag, and I'm going to stick with that, uh, with that, with that uh, prediction. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to insult you. I wanted to say something nice about you, that you're an optimistic person. <laughs> All right. I'm buying a gun. I'm not optimistic, so uh, don't, don't throw me in there. I'm reading about uh, the U.S. military forces training for zombie okay. apocalypse. I'll show you. I, I can, I, it, it's true.